In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through a classical game that I played about two months ago in my club's uh, championship tournament, where there's seven rounds and it's like a sort of a round robin thing, but you basically just play people with a similar amount of points to you. This is round two, and I'm currently 1 0, because I've 1 1. And so I'm playing against my opponent, who's also won his first game. And essentially, uh, because I'm rated 1927 at this point, right now I'm about 1950, and my opponent is fairly lower rated than me. Even as the black pieces, really, I need to try and push for a win. And my opponent opens with e4. And despite the fact that I need a win, I do play c6, uh, the Karo Khan, which isn't really a move pushing for an advantage. c5 would be more of um, like a move that strives to create imbalance and win. But I go for c6 because I'm really comfortable in it. And even if we go to a fairly equal endgame, I have the confidence that I'm going to be able to push for a little something extra. So we have the main line, knight c3, takes takes, and I play a really trendy line, knight f6, where I damage my pawn structure. Um, I can't really take with the g pawn here, it's just bad. I mean, you can do it, but e takes is better. And you open up the e file for your rook, you have the open d file to try and control the d5 square and prevent prevent the white b pawn from advancing. White plays c3. And I spoke to my opponent after the game, and he said that he had prepared the first few moves because c3, he goes bishop d3, knight d2, and queen c2. It's the correct setup, so we get... I play h6 here because he's threatening to take the pawn. And we get this position, and my opponent said that he knew this was the correct setup for his pieces, which is right. But from here, he was kind of on his own. And so he goes bishop e3. I go rook e8, just taking control of the file. Um, and even here, there's some ideas of um, making use of a potential pin if the knight moves. Uh, but I kind of think that if I can keep pieces on the board and just pose problems for my opponent, then I can get something out of the game. Knight g3 is played. And I go bishop g4, which is an interesting move. I first of all stop white from castling queenside because the king can't move through with check, right? The knight can't be kicked out with f3 because it hangs a bishop. Um, and my opponent can castle kingside. And here, I probably just continue with normal development. But the bishop is a bit annoying. It's not technically doing anything, but it's kind of just in black's territory, sorry, white's territory. So I play it as a bit of like a, how do I call it? Like just trying to bait my opponent, like a baity move, just see how he reacts. Because um, I was more than happy just to bring it back to e6 if it got kicked out somehow. My opponent plays h3, which is a massive blunder. And the reason is that this pawn is overloaded now, because this pawn no longer defends the knight. I was calculating lines like bishop takes here, because if here, then I just take this pawn and I'm winning, right? But if my opponent takes like this, I've got bishop, uh, rook takes here, king d1. And now my pieces are forked, and I'd calculated rook takes here check, queen takes, and retreating the bishop. But I didn't like the fact that Bla that white had a good bit of play on the king side. So I found the best move, which was rook takes e3 check, sacrificing the rook. White has to take it, obviously. Then I take on g3 with check, and it's important that these moves come with checks, because it means that my... Bishop, which is under attack, can't be taken. King d2. And then I just drop the bishop back. And, I mean, I've got two pieces. A knight and a dark squared bishop for a rook. 
And I'm happy, obviously. And I think I also... No, we're equal on pawns. So I just have two pieces for the rook. Which is obviously better. He goes rook a to f1. And here I want to be really precise. Really precise. Now, my bishop on g3 is actually really good. Because the rook can't kick it out. As it's the f3 square is controlled by my bishop. So it's it's not easy for white at all. If I go knight d7, just controlling some important squares. My opponent told me he was trying to make something like rook takes f6 work in the future. It doesn't work, but if as long as I get the knight here, it reduces any risk. He goes king c1, getting his king out the center. I play rook e8, just attacking the pawn, which he then pushes. So that it's defended. I then go c5, which is the best move, trying to break apart white's structure because if he takes, knight takes, and this is a lot of pressure on the white position. Um, so my opponent plays rook f5, trying to fork these pieces, and I can play bishop g6 here, but then my opponent was going to play rook f3. And put some pressure on my bishop. So I found an even better move. At least in my opinion. Bishop f4 check. So I give the king a check. Force the king to move. Then drop the bishop back. Because the rook now can't retreat. The computer. Wants. Either rook f1. Or g4. Both giving up the rook. My opponent's never going to play that. He goes rook d5. Because it's the rook's only square where it can't get taken. And then I find the move c4. Attacking this bishop. And forcing the bishop off of the defense of e4. So that my rook and bishop team up. And you see this alignment with the king and queen. That's bad news. So he takes. And if queen takes. Then rook takes here. And bishop takes here. I do win the queen. But I keep it simple. I just take on e4, pinning the queen to the king, and forcing bishop d3 to block that. And then I take on d5, because the rook is hanging. And my opponent resigns in this position, and I win, going 2 for 2 in the club championship so far. I have rounds 3 and 4 tomorrow and the day after. So after I play those, I'll make recap videos on them. So that you guys can follow along with my progress. Uh, I've got some really tough games though coming up. Um, yeah, I'm actually playing one of them tonight. Uh, I do have white in both of them. But I'm against some very strong players. And tomorrow I'm playing against like a 11 year old Indian prodigy. He's rated like 2200. <laughs> so I have beaten him before. But that was a year ago. And he's... He's got a lot better since, so wish me luck in that. Um, I will make recap videos for you guys so you can follow the journey, as I said. And hopefully, we can make some good progress in it. But yeah, that's the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. It was a nice little rook sacrifice on E3. And yeah, hopefully all you Gotham Chess viewers enjoyed the sacrifice of the rook. And if you stayed till the end, please drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.